hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new karibu welcome if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much paul is making time to come and be with me so this is a continuation of my last video so just in case you've not managed to watch it you can go and watch um because this is a continuation so in the first video i told you i found out that i'm pregnant in july 26 2024 and it took me over one month just to get a doctor's appointment i eventually got a doctor's appointment when i was nine weeks pregnant we went for the ultrasound the baby measured six weeks but there was no heartbeat and i had a an abnormally big yolk sac. The doctor wanted to monitor the HCG levels uh, and that's why I left the last video. They had blood drawn from me twice so we can uh, see if the levels, the HCG levels are increasing or decreasing. So HCG level is the hormone that your body produces when you're pregnant and it keeps increasing every single day. So they were supposed to call me uh, they didn't ask me to go in, they were supposed to just call me on the phone and you know give me the results of the two tests so when they did the first test, my HCG levels at what was supposed to be nine weeks, but it was ideally six weeks, I got into the scan, uh, my HCG levels were 56,000. I don't know what measurements they use, but the doctor said it's 56,000. When they took the second measurement, my levels were down to 46,000. So that's a whole 10,000 drop. Yeah. So um, they called me and they told me that, you know, there's a drop. The HCG levels are not increasing. They're actually dropping and that's alarming. So I go in, you know, to the clinic so we can discuss the next option. So anyway, we go and she's like, with there not being a heartbeat. Oh, they said that they're going to do an ultrasound. So uh, again, just to confirm the heartbeat again. So we did the ultrasound again and there's still not no heartbeat like i even took a video can you see that heartbeat thing yeah. so there wasn't there was no heartbeat so the doctor was like since there's no heartbeat we've done the ultrasound twice your yolk is abnormally big and your your hcg levels are dropping it ideally means this pregnancy is not viable and we have to um you have to like expel it you know and that really crashed us you know when they really called and they said the hcg levels are dropping i was i was like oh i guess that's it i guess that's it but hearing it hearing it from her now was 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 a bit it was too much it was a lot it was a lot so she was like at this point we have three options. The first option is she can sign me up for a DNC. DNC is a procedure that you undergo under anesthesia or anesthesia. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so it's basically a procedure, an operation. You go to the hospital. You go to the hospital and they vacuum or clean your uterus and just take off the conception, products of conception. Um, the second option she was giving me is I could take medication uh, that will help my body to just expel uh, the, the remains or the, con the products of conception. And the third uh, option she was giving me was just waiting it out uh, and just see if my body is going to recognize that, yeah, things are not going the way they're supposed to go and it will start the process of miscarriage normally or naturally. I mean, my husband was there, but I felt like this was more of my decision than it was of him. That's what I felt like. And so I told him I I don't feel comfortable going to the hospital to have it cleaned or to have my address cleaned. I don't want to go under anesthesia just to do this. And I also don't want to wait because with waiting, there's a risk of infections and all that. But I also didn't want to wait because I feel like if there's no heartbeat, the HCG levels are dropping. Like, there's no hope. You know, I feel like there's no hope. So really waiting it out until my body just realizes something's not right. I didn't feel like I have that patience and that grace to wait it out. So, yeah, I told my husband I prefer taking the medication so that, you know, I do the process at home and it's going to be a bit easier. And so, yeah, she, yeah, my husband was like, yeah, 
whatever you feel like is safe and you know whatever you feel like you will make you feel way better um i'll support that there's, there's no hope to hold on to there's no heartbeat hcg levels are dropping abnormally big yolk sac literally i have no hope to hold on to cuz i would only wait it out if there was hope that it can continue growing but just waiting it out for it to come out mm it wasn't it wasn't cutting it for me so uh, so yeah the doctor was like okay so she prescribed medication and you know she told me how I was supposed to put it and yeah um went ahead to go home so she sent us home went to get the medication with the with America they don't give medication in the hospital the doctor will send the medication in a in a pharmacy that you choose and then you go take the medicine there and no one will ever give you medicine here if you don't have a doctor's prescription so we went take the medicine got, i had to insert the medicine in my pg um so i did that and ideally that's supposed to contract the uterus so it can expel everything and yeah um after like an hour i started bleeding and you know i was passing clots i was cramping i was in that much like i could handle it i didn't even take a painkiller honestly went ahead to bleed for like 3 days uh you know that first night is when i passed like clots and the bleeding was a bit too much or uh, was more than a normal period but then after that the bleeding was small bleeding or like just like a period bleeding and um I was supposed to go back for checkup in a week's time. I don't know why she asked me to go back in a week's time, but she did ask me to go back in a week's time. And so in a week's time I went back and we got the rudest shock of our life. So when we got there, she's like she just needs to do an ultrasound just to make sure that everything has cleared the way it's supposed to clear. I was like, "Okay." So I go in, transvaginal ultrasound again. Transvaginal is they insert something in your VJ to do the ultrasound so it's not the normal ultrasound for the up here for people who don't know the ultrasound lady did the transvaginal uh, ultrasound uh, and uh, she sent me back to the doctor so the doctor came and she was like uh, sweetie i can see there's still some little lining you know it hasn't cleared the way it's supposed to clear and we might have to do the medicine again because i know you don't want to go to you know to the doctor the hospital to have it cleaned out but you would need to either do the medicine again if you leave any products of conception then there's a risk of infection and at this point honestly i'd already mourned this whole thing i was already at peace with everything that was happening but so when she said i have to do the medicine again i felt a little bit disappointed and you know i was kind of angry because i was talking to this baby of mine i'm like Baby we we really wanted you to be here. We didn't want you to go. Like we wanted you to fight this. But when we've released you, you know, I've decided to take the medicine and just release you. You also don't want to go. Like I don't understand, you know? So I was a bit disappointed and angry about that that I had to do the process again. So yeah, she she gave me the medication again and I went back home, you know, administered it and I was expecting to bleed because at that point I wasn't bleeding as much I was only actually bleeding very little I had still had cramps the cramps had now gotten so much worse and I was even taking medication for that like painkillers for that so uh when she said there was still something I was like I could see why there would still be something because I'm cramping and I'm still bleeding it's not that much bleeding but you can still without a pad because you're going to mess up so anyway I took the medication the second time in the evening and i sat there waiting to bleed guys do you know i didn't bleed in fact the mes- the medicine they gave me is called misoprostol cyto cyto cytococ I'll, i'll put it here i didn't bleed like the second time i honestly didn't bleed and in fact the bleeding that i had the little bleeding that i had stopped so i called the clinic and i'm like hey there was still products of conception you know got into the ultrasound and he gave me medicine that was supposed to make me expel it but i'm not bleeding and i'm worried i don't know what's going on and she's like um i'll just wait it out uh just wait it out and you know don't miss your appointment uh next week because she'd give me she'd give me another appointment the coming week it's like okay that's how i eventually just completely stopped bleeding 
and by the time I was going in for checkup the next week, I was asking her, this medicine, <laughs> was it supposed to make me bleed or make me stop bleeding? Because my bleeding just completely stopped. And I didn't even have cramps at this point. So she was like, um, there are sometimes we use the medicine to make people stop bleeding. So, but if there was something in the uterus, you, you ought to have bled. I was like, well, I didn't. Yeah, and at this point, I felt like the whole process had really dragged so much. I just want to get done with it, you know, because I feel like it's already dragged so much. Yeah, but that's, 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 that's ideally what what happened so we had already introduced mikey to saying good morning to the baby and you know he'd be like hi baby i'm your big brother and so he knew there was a baby in mama's tummy so you know once in a while he'll come and be like there's a baby in here <laughs> you know and i'm like oh i don't know how to explain to you that we don't have a baby in here anymore but it is what it is i believe we all have different journeys that we have to go through um, and if you're given a certain assignment or a certain journey, simply means God trusts that you can carry that cross. And so I'm like, if not me, who else, you know? And so I chose to share my journey or my story. Um, I never shared the first uh, loss that we had because that was the first time that I lost a baby and it was, it was, just, it was just so overwhelming. I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to share it, but now that I've done it, this is like the same time. I was like, okay, let me share so that when you finally see us with a baby, you'll be part of the, you will be part of the testimony. You'd know what, what had happened previously. Yeah, and just to encourage another woman out there, like women go through a lot. At this season of my life, you know, um, the couple that's really encouraging me is Benjamin and Akinye. I watched their videos, you know, about how they tried for a baby for three years and they didn't have any success. And now she's pregnant, you know, and I'm, I just look at her, I'm like, yeah, there's hope. <laughs> there's there's definitely hope. And so just a disclaimer, we didn't lose our pregnancy because we shared it on social media. That's not the case. We lost this baby at nine weeks, stroke six weeks. Um, and we had not told anyone, not even our family members. Uh, the only people who knew that we were pregnant by the time we were losing this child was me, my husband, and Mikey, our son, our three-year-old. So we did not lose a child or we didn't lose this pregnancy because we shared the news of our pregnancy on social media. There's always that misconception and you're told, oh, don't share, don't share, don't share. Yeah, but we, don't, we did not lose the baby. We didn't lose the pregnancy because we shared. It's good to have that disclaimer out there. It simply happened and we had not told anyone. It just simply happened. Am I disappointed by God? No, I'm not. Um, I feel like he works in his ways. I just choose to look at, at it in a very positive way. And my God is never limited. My God is never limited. Um, I know he will do it. And I take this time to pray for all the waiting wombs. I take this time to pray for all the women who are struggling just to conceive a baby. I take this time to pray for every woman that's going through pregnancy and child related issues I take this time to spray yeah because we have we go through challenges as human beings sometimes that we can't that we can't explain that we wish that we are not going through but I just I just pray and if you're here you're watching this video and You've lost the baby before. You've lost the pregnancy before. Let's encourage each other <laughs> in the comment section. Let's encourage each other. It can be a very daunting experience. And it can be a very challenging period and time. And there are women who don't even have anyone to talk to. There are women who don't have anyone to share with. So I am, I am that woman. I am your sister. I've gone through it. I'm here, still hopeful that
I will one day carry my baby. I'll just end this video right here. And as always, remember to be kind to one another, love one another, and treasure every minute you spend with one another because tomorrow is not promised. Bye bye. And the people who keep telling women, oh, why are you married and you don't have kids and stuff like that, please stop. You never know what one is suffering or going through behind closed doors. Just mind your business. Honestly, just mind your business. Just mind your business. Just mind your business. It's none of your business that all someone has been married for years and they have no child. The people who don't want children, genuinely, but there's some who are struggling to get pregnant. So just be kind. But anyway, don't be don't be stupid enough to think to ignore that fact. Yeah. Always tell yourself it's not it's not in your it's not in your place, it's not your business. Yeah.